The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IONS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. A listener recently asked me what the difference was between an out-of-body experience, and the spiritual conditions common to being a ghost. Well, it, it just so happens we have a guest today who has written about and discussed many of the options we can prepare to experience when we die, such choices as becoming an ascendant master, merging with the absolute, becoming an enlightened spiritual being, or living with a God of our understanding. It all depends on how we prepare ourselves in this life for what we want to be in the next. Doctor of Divinity Susan Shumsky is a highly respected spiritual teacher and best-selling author of 19 books in English and 36 in other languages. She's won 40 prestigious book awards. A pioneer in the human potential field, she's taught meditation, prayer, affirmation, and intuition to thousands worldwide for many decades. Her books include Miracle Prayer, Divine Revelation, Exploring Meditation, Ascension, Instant Healing, The Power of Auras, Awaken Your Third Eye, Awaken Your Divine Intuition, Color Your Chakras, The Big Book of Chakras, Third Eye Meditations, Earth Energy Meditations, Prosperity Meditations, and her memoir, Maharishi and Me. For two decades, Susan studied in the Swiss Alps, the Himalayas, and around the world under the direct guidance of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, Guru of the Beatles and Guru to Deepak Chopra. She served on Maharishi's personal staff for six of those years. Dr. Shumsky is founder of Divine Revelation, a unique field proven technology for contacting the divine presence, hearing and testing the inner voice and receiving clear divine guidance. Prior to COVID, I assume she traveled extensively facilitating spiritual seminars and tours to Mount Shasta, Sedona, the Tetons, India, Peru, Egypt, Bali and the Yucatan and other sacred destinations and she has designed and produced spiritual conferences and holistic seminars at sea. Her websites are drsusan.org and uh, divinetravels.com. Susan, welcome to NDE Radio. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Well, we're excited to have you. And, uh, and if possible, we might uh, continue this discussion um, in, uh, to the ne- next week as well. Um, Susan, like you, during the 1960s, I discovered much spirituality in the works of Alan Watts and Yogananda, as well as in the Eastern Religions Department at Columbia University. But what was it like for you studying and working with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi? Well, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, uh, he was the founder of Transcendental Meditation, and he was the happiest person I ever met in my life. He was always smiling, giggling, laughing, cracking jokes. Uh, Everything was a cosmic joke to him. (laughs) And he had this amazing energy. As a matter of fact, when I first went to the Transcendental Meditation Center in Berkeley, California, there was no teacher there or anything, but there was a picture of Maharishi on the wall, a small picture on the wall. And as soon as I saw the picture and I could feel the energy that was emanating from this picture, especially from his eyes, uh, this incredible love vibration and also this spiritual wave of uh, energy, ecstasy, bliss, I could feel this energy and it just uh, kind of knocked me over. And it made me feel like this is where I could really learn meditation. I could learn real meditation here in this mm-hmm. Uh, through this teacher. So his picture worked actually like an orthodox icon. Um, Oh, (laughs) I didn't realize that that was the purpose of the orthodox icon. Thank you for uh, (laughs) teaching me about that. Well, it's a, it's a window to heaven, but it's, it's through the, usually through the picture of a saint. And uh, I think that's probably how you saw this one as well. Um, Susan, in a previous interview, you were asked for an affirmation, and you gave a lovely one that ended with, where I am, God is, and all is well. And I'm wondering, is that also true for ghosts? 
That's true for every being and every energy in the cosmos, that wherever they are, God is and all is well. But whether they know that or not, that's, that's the key. So you are as attuned to God as you choose to be. And ghosts in general are said to be earthbound spirits, and so they are not attuned to the vi God vibration. They are attuned to, they're stuck or stranded on the earth plane, mm. material plane. So who are ghosts primarily? Did they have a problem in their life that, uh, that um, stuck them here when they died? Why are they here? Well, I've counted 15 reasons why a soul does not move on into the light. Uh, obviously, this is a near-death experience radio, so you know about the near-death experience where people see a tunnel, they see a light, they go into the light, often their loved ones are in the tunnel, ushering them into the light, they meet a divine being, they might have a life review, other things might happen on the other side, and then they come back from death. And I do believe that the near-death experience is extremely accurate as to what happens when a person dies. There are some souls, however, who, for various reasons, do not go into the light. And as I said, I've counted 15 different reasons why that happens. And um, yes, they are stuck or stranded uh, in the earthly vibration. Mm. What, tell us the 15 reasons. Well, first of all, uh, they may be unaware that they're dead. Uh, yes, it's possible for you to not be aware that you're dead. Uh, in fact, there is a film that depicted that. It was called The Sixth Sense, yes. in which Bruce Willis played a character who didn't realize he was dead. And the nor reason did, why nor, they... did, nor did the audience until the end. Well, I did. I figured it out immediately. <laughs> oh, so, did, saw... so did my wife. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw the camera pan up to the ceiling, which meant that his soul was up on the ceiling. It was uh, obvious but to me. But in any case, um, so, uh, yeah, they are. The reason why people are not aware that they're dead, why that can happen, and by the way, that happened to my own mother. Uh, the reason that can happen is because nothing happens when you die. You have the same personality. You have the same mind. In fact, you even have your senses are still there. Uh, I don't know why people don't ask themselves, why is it that when a person leaves their body and they have a near-death experience, how is it that they can see themselves being resuscitated? Why are they up on the ceiling watching themselves? What, what is seeing? I mean, it's certainly not their eyes that are seeing themselves. In fact, our senses are in our subtle body. They're not in our gross physical body. But the reason why people, like I said, the reason why they uh, are not aware that they're dead is because death is not real. Uh, we, we continue to live after death. So that's one reason. Another reason is they just get lost and confused. They don't know what's happening. That can often happen when a soul, when a person has been given drugs at death, a, a lot of drugs, and they're unconscious when they die. So a person who's unconscious when they die may remain a little unconscious afterwards and just be kind of lost and confused and disoriented, not knowing what's happening, not knowing where they, they are. And also referring back to that movie, The Sixth Sense, the reason why uh, he didn't know he was dead is because of uh, he had a sudden accidental, well, it wasn't accidental, but it was a sudden death. He was murdered. He was shot. And he yes. didn't, so that kind of, that can happen. That can even happen in uh, wartime where a person doesn't real. it's so sudden that suddenly, you know, they're alive and they're dead. There was no transition, really. If a person's sick for a long time and they're in their deathbed, they know they're going to die. But if it's a sudden death, then that can prevent them from realizing that they're dead. Um, another reason a person might not go into the light is they just don't even believe in the afterlife. They don't believe in that there is anything after death. And that certainly can prevent them from going into the light. 
Um, they might be arrogant or stubborn. Maybe they see their relatives in the in the tunnel and they don't want to have anything to do with them. Um, mm. They don't want to be shown into the light or go into the light. Uh, there can be guilt and shame. Now that uh, often comes from religious training where they feel that they're not worthy to go into the light because they have sinned, because they're bad people, mm. which is really sad because religion should be something that gives us comfort, that gives us hope, that gives us solace. And certainly religion should be something that will guide us into the light. But mm. unfortunately, this idea of sin, uh, that can prevent people from going into the light. Then there's also the terror or fear of that uh, when they die, that they're going to go up to the pearly gates and then the big book will come out and St. Peter and what, or whatever. And uh, then they'll be condemned to hellfire and damnation. So, you know, once again, religion preventing people from going into the light because they're afraid that they will be judged and that they are sinners and that they will be going to hell. Mm -hmm. um, another reason for <clears throat> the soul becoming earthbound is that they are ashamed that they committed suicide. Now, a person who commits suicide, often people think that they don't get to go into the light, but that's not true at all. Um, but there is a, because of that kind of superstition, suicide victims are actually not even allowed to be buried in the same cemetery in some religious uh, practices. Yes. But the reality is that there is no shame in that and anyone can go into the light. Uh, but that feeling of shame, that inner feeling of shame can prevent, prevent the soul from going into the light. Another reason for the soul to become earthbound is because they're overly attached to their loved ones. They don't want to be parted from the people that they love. So they may continue to hang around their loved ones. They may continue to hang around the house and, uh, and not leave. They just want to be close to their loved ones and they might appear to them, try to talk to them, communicate with them and so on. The next reason for souls becoming earthbound is they're overly attached to the earth plane. They're overly attached to material life. It's possible that they don't even realize that there is a spiritual body that's different from the physical body. And they're just hanging around on the earth plane and not going, not leaving, not going anywhere. And they could possibly stay for a very long time, hundreds or even thousands of years. They can stay attached to a place, for example, a house, um, maybe a religious institution, perhaps a theater. Often uh, you find that theaters are haunted. So these hauntings are simply uh, ghosts or earthbound spirits who are attached to the earth plane and won't move on. Another a reason for the soul not moving on would be blame or vengeance. Uh, mm. Just being stuck there. There is a movie that shows that it's called ghost. And in that movie, there was a, a blame, there was vengeance going on. And the, and also there was unfinished business, which is another reason why a soul does not move on. And uh, once that business gets taken care of, then uh, in that film, it showed the ghost going into the light at, you know, at the end of the film. So uh, that's another reason why souls do not move on. Um, the twelfth reason is addiction. Uh, if the soul uh, is addicted to substances, for example, if they have a heavy addiction, well, guess what? At death, that addiction doesn't disappear. Because as I said in the beginning, really nothing happens at, at death. You're the same person, the same personality, the same desires, the same mind. So you're still addicted, but you don't have a body anymore. You're dead. So how are you going to fulfill your addiction? Well, you might attach yourself to a living human. Uh, often you might attach yourself to an addict. For example, if you're an alcoholic, you might go to a bar and find yourself 
uh, someone who's drunk, uh, or you, if you are t attached to drugs, if you're addicted to drugs, you find yourself an addict. Um, but it might not even be an addict. It might just be somebody who's weak, who you attach yourself to. It could even be somebody who's uh, in the hospital and has had an accident, or perhaps even somebody who's, who's unconscious who's in the hospital. And uh, if you attach yourself to a body like that, then that person will suddenly become an addict. They will change their personality if, uh, if an addict soul is able to attach themselves to a living human, then that will change the personality of that living human. Mm. Uh, then uh, the 13th reason is, um, okay, so this can happen if you, when you sign the uh, organ donation card, there's nothing wrong with donating your organs if you know that you are a spiritual being living temporarily in a physical body and therefore uh, there's no reason for you to be attached to your physical organs then signing the organ donation card is fine uh, in fact it's a great thing to do but if you think that this physical body is all there is and you sign that organ donation card without realizing without thinking it through then when you die and they start to remove the organs from your body and you are there still stuck in your body and attached to your body, then that can be highly disconcerting and that could prevent the soul from moving on. Wow. Uh, another reason is a de desire for recognition and power. That desire can uh, create what we call a faker spirit. A faker spirit is a spirit who uh, attempts to uh, be something that they're not. They're attempting to be some high spiritual being, for example. In fact, they might identify themselves with a high sounding name or even a biblical sounding name. And uh, then they might attach themselves to a psychic channel or medium and speak through that medium. And the medium thinks that they're in touch with a uh, someone, someone who's a genuine spiritual being, a mm -hmm. light being, but in fact they're faking, faking out everybody, and then they get the recognition and power that they desired when they were alive. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the last possible reason why someone might not move on is because they believe that they have signed a contract with dark forces. They believe that they've kind of made a uh, deal with the devil, shall we say. Um, that is not really true. You can't really make a deal with the devil. But if you believe you've done that, then you won't move on into the light after death. Mm. I wonder if um, the, where the Scientologists sign people up for a billion years commitment, if that would be somewhat equivalent to that. I would uh, say yes. I would say <laughs> that that could possibly prevent the soul from moving on because of a commitment that they made like that. They actually did sign a contract like that, and that could definitely prevent them from moving on into the light. Uh, how, do you, how do you see the uh, Catholic notion of purgatory relating to ghosts? Well, purgatory is simply the astral world. The astral world is the place where earthbound spirits are dwelling because they have not gone into the light. Um, so they would be in limbo. I'm not sure if that's the same as purgatory. Purgatory might, I'm not sure exactly about that tenant, what it really means. Well, purgatory was if you had committed sins not so severe that you could, you go to hell, then you're in purgatory for a time and you, um, you suffer, I guess, perhaps just from the absence of the light until until you've paid your debt and then you move into the light. Limbo was a was a place where unbaptized souls went and I never gave it any credence whatsoever. But uh, that's uh, that was a different case. So un, un, um, unbaptized children went to limbo. Which is nuts. OK, but OK, anyway. so um, yeah. So first of all, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe I, I don't believe in those tenets of, of the idea of hell, but 
um, let's just say that I believe that this idea of purgatory or the idea of limbo comes from the reality of the place that I would call the astral world where souls do not go into the light. We have a choice after death, just, you know, as I said, nothing happens at death. We are still uh, a human being who makes choices, who has free will. We can go into the light or not go into the light. We can believe in a light or believe in God and not believe in God. If we don't believe in God, if we don't see a light, then we can get stuck there in that, what we call the astral world. And that is where these earthbound souls are living. That's where even demonic beings are living. So it's uh, not a pleasant place to be. Um, and, and it's not heaven. It's not the heavenly realm. It's not the, the divine light. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I would say about that. If there are demons, would there also be guardian angels? And what, if there are, why wouldn't they help the soul to move into the light? Indeed, yes, there are demons, and indeed there are guardian angels, and the guardian angels are in the spiritual plane. Um, there are several planes of existence. We have the spiritual world, the astral world, the mental world, and the environmental world. And the uh, spiritual world is where the guardian angels reside. And uh, yes, uh, they would help a soul to go into the light if the soul asks for that. Um, these uh, spiritual beings, these divine beings, uh, do not interfere with human free will unless there's a huge emergency. They don't, they don't interfere. They allow people to make their own choices. So yes, an angel would help the soul move into the light if the soul would pray or ask, simply ask, even ask, mm. uh, for help. Then, yes, they would help them. It's a little like Howard Storm's story about calling out to Jesus and being saved from some souls that were dragging him down. Uh, is it safe to communicate with ghosts? It is safe to communicate with souls that have moved on into the light. Then they can become like guardian angels for you. So mm -hmm. your deceased loved ones, your grandma or whoever, might be in the light and you might be able to talk with her, communicate with her, and it's perfectly safe to do that once the soul has gone into the light. And if the soul has not gone into the light, it's okay to communicate with them also, but f mainly for the purpose of sending them into the light, of telling them that there is a light, that they can go into the light, and wouldn't it be a good idea for them to go into the light? Sort of convince them to go into the light or say a little prayer to help them to do that. I had a, a friends that were um, part of the Quaker faith that uh, back in the 60s who went to haunted houses and would say prayers, hold hands and say prayers and talk to the spirit that was there and do just that. Say, you know, look around, though, there's there's an angel or or a loved one who is there to to lead you out of here. They said, uh, they told me one time that the worst place they ever went to was a barn that had burned down with the horses inside. Oh. And the horses' spirits were still there. Ah, oh. that's so sad. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. It's really very simple. I would just, uh, I would recommend that you simply speak lovingly to that spirit and say something such as this. Uh, dear one, you are healed and forgiven. You are lifted in love. You are united with the truth of being. You are filled with divine love. You are filled with divine light. You are filled with divine wisdom. You are filled divine tr with divine truth. You are free from fear. You are free from pain. You are free from this earthly vibration. You are free to go into the divine light now. You are blessed, forgiven, and released into the love, light, and wholeness of universal spirit. You are blessed, forgiven, and released into the love, light, and wholeness of universal spirit. You are blessed, forgiven, and released into the love, light, and wholeness of the universal spirit. You are lifted into the light. You are lifted into the light of God. You are lifted into the light of God. You are lifted into the light of God. Go now in peace. Go now in love. When you say a prayer such as that, or you can use your own words. You don't have to use those words. 
that will help the soul to move on into the light. And you'll feel the lifting as you're doing that. You'll feel them being lifted into the light. Yeah. Once in my 15 years as a hospital chaplain, I had a person who had just died try to take over my body. Oh. And you have this icy, cold, nauseating feeling when it happens. And I excused myself from the room where the family was and went out into the hallway and said, you don't belong here. You don't want to be in here. You can't stay here. You must move on. Look around. You know, the, the light is waiting for you. There are, there are angels to guide you. Just invented words as that came to my mind because I was so horrified by the feeling. Oh, my goodness. And then they moved on. And they I moved assume. on. Yes, they did. And I hope Beautiful. they were brought into the light. You know, it's, uh, yeah. but he yeah. was desperate. He was so angry as he was dying and in such pain that he My was, goodness. he was very much, you know, hell bent on being a ghost, I think, until he came on board. And I, I hope I talked him out of that, that course. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, there it is. So many of the things we just mentioned, you know, the yeah. blame, the vengeance, Oh, how does some ghosts can materialize they can appear to the living they can sometimes throw things at them even how does what what's going on there well um what, what they call poltergeist which means simply a mischievous or noisy ghost it literally means noisy ghost that would be a, a ghost who is uh, turning the lights on and off moving the furniture rattling the windows uh just causing chaos in the environment uh, to make themselves known to human beings. And that is possible for earth, uh, earthbound spirits to do that. It is possible. So uh, that would be um, a situation where uh, you would want to help that ghost to move on and also heal the people. <laughs> Uh, who are being afflicted by such a haunting. Um, right. So, yeah. I heard, I heard of one case where a ghost that did not want to acknowledge being dead and was in love with the person he was attached to, following her around until finally, I think she realized what was going on. She ran up his obituary on her computer and he read it. And after that, he was gone. Oh, oh, okay. So he didn't know he was dead. He didn't realize he was mm -hmm. dead. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that can happen. So, so many, uh, so many interesting things on that on that plane. And do you have any idea how many uh, ghosts there might be? Does it seem like the world is full of spirits when you think about it? Well, how many? I mean, there has has to be millions of ghosts because. <laughs> Some of these ghosts have been hanging around for thousands of years. So ghosts are very prevalent. And you, there's always a ghost within earshot if you want to heal a, an atmosphere. If you walk into a building and you have a kind of creepy feeling about that building, you walk into a home or you walk into an institution or there's many places that have ghosts hanging around. So especially older buildings, obviously. The older buildings have more ghosts than the newer buildings. So there will always be a ghost within earshot if you want to do what I call astral healing and you want to lift the vibration of a building. There will, there will be ghosts there and they will be uh, moving on into the light if you say a prayer for them. Mm. Do you think there are ghosts that are trying to, um, like possession, are trying to take over um, a baby in the womb or uh, an infant so that they or like self reincarnating beings? You know, I've never heard of one taking over a baby. Um, I'm not sure that that's very common, although theoretically that could definitely happen. I mean, an, a, a earthbound spirit could take over. I don't want to say take over. They could possess um, a hum, any living, living being. They can even possess an animal a dog, a cat, whatever, uh, they can uh, possess that living being. And uh, I did mention one case, and that was addiction would be one reason why they feel motivated to 
possess a human being. Another one would be uh, what I mentioned before, which was the desire for recognition and power, where they're uh, influencing, oppressing, or possessing. Astral influence means that you are getting drained from uh, an entity who is in your environment or in your awareness. Mm. So that would I would call that influence. Oppression would be a very strong influence where they're hanging around you a lot and really causing a lot of drain and havoc in your life. But possession is the worst case, and that's where they're actually inhabiting your body. They haven't driven your soul out because the soul cannot be driven out, but they're cohabiting your body along with your soul. And that would be the worst case of, of uh, what we call possession. And that can cause uh, terrible effects, including mental illness, very severe mental illness. Yes. is often caused by astral possession. Susan, it seems we're out of time for today, but I would love to have you back again to describe other states of being that exist on the other side or that we can aspire to reincarnate into here. Tell our listeners how to find your website. My website is drsusan.org. That's drsusan.org. And I also have another website about my holistic seminars at sea, conferences at sea, and other tours to sacred destinations. And that would be divinetravels.com. That's D-I-V-I-N-E-T-R-A-V-E-L-S. That is plural on the travels, divinetravels.com and drsusan.org. Thanks so much, Susan Chomsky, for sharing with us today. Thank you, Lee, for inviting me. And you're invited back. So if listeners would like to hear this show again or any of our nearly 400 past shows, just go to our past shows button at NDE Radio. For information about IANS, go to IANDS.org. And tune in again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for more NDE Radio with Susan Shumsky. This is Lee Whitting saying thanks for listening. <laughs>